Are you ready to see some dirt midgets put on a show? We certainly are. Tonight, some of the best 15 and over dirt midget drivers at all of iRacing look to fight for hundreds of dollars in prizes. Who will come away with the top prize by the end of the season? Or better yet, who will start their championship bids off with a W? We're about to see here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Virtual Elite Raceplex in Brazelton, Georgia, for the opening race of the CSI Shocks Fall Series season. I'm Justin Prince alongside the move tonight is Chris Bowlby, and behind the scenes is our director, Sean Ambrose. He's using cameras provided by Dougie Beard. Chris, tonight's venue is an interesting one here on the iRacing service. This track originally opened as a dirt facility back in the early 1980s before being paved in the middle of that decade. It also was closed, however, for parts of the 2010s, and it was even turned into a go-kart racing facility before hosting the past national championship finale just this past weekend. What can you tell us about this Georgia-based venue? Well, the dirt version of this track, much like the pavement version, is three-eighths of a mile in length. We're going to see very quick laps around this track, uh, probably sub-14 seconds. Uh, 5 to 11 degrees of banking here on the dirt surface here at Lanier Raceplex. And it's going to be a very interesting race on this wide track. So we're going to throw things down now to our virtual lap guide. Uh, no lap guide apologies there, but either way, this is going to be an interesting race, especially with a bit of the banking throughout these corners this evening. It's the first race of the season. Let's take a chance to look at your race details for the start of this five-round season. Should be an interesting one of these dirt midgets here, Chris. Definitely, this is the first of five rounds for this series. Uh, obviously in the dirt midget with a fixed setup. We're going to lock in the top 12 qualifiers into the A main, and then we're going to take the top three finishers in both heat races onto our main event. We're also going to invert the 12 fastest that locked in through qualifying to set our starting grid for the main event. That puts a lot of emphasis, as you mentioned a bit there, on the qualifying to make sure you punch your ticket into the show. Because tonight's field for this year's competition is going to be very interesting and very strong. You have professional drivers from this year's Pro Series in iRacing's various different event events featuring guys like Justin Thompson, Cole Newhoffen, and Alex Bergeron, who was strong in the springtime. You also have a various mixture of real-world drivers and varying levels of experience also fighting for the various prizes for this Whitfall Series here, Chris. Yeah, definitely a nice mix of experience in these cars in the real world. It's going to make for a very interesting race as we see who can really be the best on these changeable dirt track conditions. As the drivers continue on with practice, we'd like to remind you that the Global Sim Racing Channel has its own merchandise store now. From there, you can buy items such as a GSRC flat build baseball cap. That way, you can look the best hips up wherever you are across the world. To buy one of the coolest hats, you will see this block of sim racing. That's gsrcstore.storenby.com. Meanwhile, as you can see the practice times along some of the screen, as well as that beautiful hat, there are two different options on that Global Sim Racing Channel store. The time's about 13.9s to the 14.7s as they continue to work in the surface on this racetrack. That's right. One thing very cool about the dirt racing is how dynamic the track surface can really be. Yeah, later on this evening when they start the heat races, that track state will reset to about 30% and carry over to the mains. We'll detail that a little bit on later on. Talk. Let's talk about what these drivers will be competing for prize-wise. The season series champion will come away with a Samsung tablet with Pit Logic on board and a $500 shock package discount, a value of about $750. Second prize is going to be a CSI apparel gift pack, a $250 shock package discount. 
as well as for third place they will also get that same pack with the 100 dollar shock package discount and those could be very important especially with the pit logic to help with their setups as well as that shock package to help you build your race cars that's right those are very useful tools for getting the car dialed in and and of course you can't discount a good discount as uh, these drivers can get a deal on on a shock package from csi which is obviously going to be very helpful for their racing and Indeed, right now these drivers have about nine minutes or so left on their practice sessions to continue to prepare things. As we talked about, three-eighths of a mile distance on this race circuit. They're currently separating the drivers amongst two different practice groups trying to prepare themselves. One of the more interesting things though when it comes to this track layout is it's a bit of a decent amount of banking, meaning that cushion could be one of the preferred lines. Other drivers though throughout the practice session have been trying to test near the bottom wall near the berm in, in fact to try and see if they can pull off slide jobs so far the lanes have been about even in terms of lane in terms of lap times it seems chris yeah it's great to see the variety in the lines being ran around this track you have guys that can run right up against the wall and guys that are searching around trying the inside line and I'm sure once we get to race time, it's going to be a little more unique than even what we're seeing here in practice. Yeah, remember this track, the last time it had dirt in real life was around the early to mid 1980s. Much of this track currently paved in real life with this facility. Falling on board with some of the cars as they continue to prepare on this racetrack. It's going to be a fun one, I think, overall, as this five week season progresses. For these drivers and their teams, the best four results out of the five weeks will count towards their championship standings, meaning, of course, with there will only be five races in the first place, there's not a lot of room for error here, Chris, throughout these next couple weeks. Yeah, that's not a lot of time to uh, make any mistakes. So no mulligans, really, when you think about it. You have to try, try to put in your best performance every time you're on the track and can be very easy to slip down the standings if you just make one misstep. Especially since there is just a 10 incident limit. You do have a fast repair available if need be. However, there's a chance you might be lapsed down if you have to use it. All the races for this season will be under the lights. And all the drivers as mentioned in that race details graphic fixed setups, meaning for some of these drivers, including the ones from the professional ranks in real life or on the sim, they're going to have to adjust in fairly quickly to these fixed set sets to make sure they know how to drive these cars as fast as they can to try and make sure they punch their tickets to the mains. And that's also going to level the playing field a lot too, if you think about it, Justin. I mean, these guys aren't going to be coming in here with trick setups that they've spent countless hours here in the sim trying to get set up to make the car perfect to them they're going to jump into these cars and they're just going to have to make chicken salad out of it if you know what i mean one of the cars you're following along with by the way that's bryson smith in the middle of your screen he's currently in a bit of a slide job battle with jake erickson who's trying to come up for the inside line of this practice as erickson able to pull off the slide job as they test things now three wide with a car coming out of the pit lane but as mentioned, some drivers from the real world, it's going to be in. some of these drivers brought forward in part with the prize package available, meaning some of these drivers may not be, may not have the sim resume, but the real world experience far surpasses that on the dirt because it's, it's kind of difficult when you think about it to try and race on the said dirt because usually you go by feel. Depending on your setup, you might ha not have the same advantages as being in the real car. Yeah, that's a that's definitely a very fair point, Dustin, when you think about what these drivers are doing trying to get these cars uh, in line for their for uh, the whole program here tonight. As you can see on the left side of your screen, by the way, it's Austin Irvine that is on top of the practice boards in the 51 machine. Colton Harvey, a 13912, followed by Kenny Miller, Cole Newhoffen, and Will Sylvester. All those drivers separated 
by under three quarters of a tenth. In terms of lap time, Justin Thomas is six at the moment. And you've got guys like Roman Gephardt who are in one of the CSI machines. But these cars are very fun ones to watch. In real life especially, you have drivers like Carl Le Larson who compete in these dirt midgets on a daily basis. Guys like Christopher Bell. They're very fun and fast machines to drive across really any circuit on the, sca on the calendar. Yeah, and not to mention some of the most prestigious events in dirt track racing are ran with these midget cars. And you think about events like the Chili Bowl, uh, you know, that's one of the most prestigious events in short track racing in general. And uh, it's these midgets running in indoors even mm -hmm. throughout the wintertime. You know, it's these cars are really throwbacks to kind of the old barnstorming days in motorsports when you think about the type of schedule they run as well. Speaking of schedule, as these drivers have about four minutes left of the practice session, here's a listen to your schedule for the fall series this season. Lanier is at the top of the schedule, then they go to Lima Land for round number two. Then they head to the dirt track at Charlotte for round number three. To Kamoko they go for round four, then to the Chili Bowl you mentioned for round five. It's going to be interesting to see how they drive because all those tracks very fairly different in characteristics especially as you mentioned the prestige of the chili bowl you got to say there's some tracks i'm really looking forward to getting the chance to call a race at that uh you know we growing up uh, i was what some would refer to as a tar baby you know, i i like the the asphalt racing so this this dirt racing is really a kind of a trial by fire thing for me justin and i gotta say the watching these cars slide around here it's uh, pretty fun so far It's going to be a fun night. And there's going to be a lot of pressure still for the qualifying here. Currently, the let's take a quick look at the weather conditions, by the way. They are adjusted to pick up on the real weather conditions in real life. Partly cloudy skies, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, with a track temp of 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Wind not a factor, uh, just two miles an hour to the north. Humidity as we expect around 56%, similar to what we've seen with some events, that also looking to not potentially be a factor. But here's one of the main things, though, when it comes to as this race goes on for the viewers that have watched these events. The more they battle on this racetrack, the more tougher it will be because of that dynamic changing track surface. Drivers trying to find the best places to get grip. Some drivers trying to slide through the slick stuff on the early portions of runs in this practice session most of the slick stuff is already gone already and they've been practicing for nearly 15 plus minutes or so making nearly 25 minutes yeah one great feature of this dirt surface is uh is exactly that the dynamic changing surface and you know the more rubber they get laid down eventually this will be racing a lot closer to what we see on asphalt than dirt towards the end Indeed, you're taking a look at some of the drivers still coming across the racetrack. This is Hardy that is second on the board as he tries to continue to get things together. One of the Slind Swindell Speed Labs machines trying to come across this racetrack. He's again one of the cars to potentially watch for tonight as he nearly squeezes Kenny Miller up towards the fence and his GVI Kiwi machine. A lot of names, again, as mentioned, that we are going to be watching tonight, especially once we start this qualifying in about 90 seconds or so here for this evening. Um, it's going to be a fun one. Yeah, that that's for sure. I mean, you see these guys, they're already slicing and dicing with each other around this track, and it's, it's amazing the amount of trust we're seeing between these guys out there on the track. Indeed, at this point, about one minute left on the practice session, then we will be wall fine. Remember, it is the... We're, we'll talk about the format in just a few moments, but qualifying is going to be important. Remember those times up on that practice board, 30, 13, 8, 9, 1, to as low as 15 seconds for a majority of these drivers as we're just about to get set to go for this qualifying session you want to start off the season, though, with a right note, Chris. Uh, you don't want to be down the eight ball early. Yeah, and I think qualifying is going to be a big part of that that uh, sense of being behind the eight ball, Justin. 
I mean, the top 12 cars right now, just over a half second splitting the top 12. And the difference between being locked in and having to transfer in from the heats is uh, 0.025 seconds, roughly. Uh, actually, less than that. I mean, that is that is a very tight margin between being locked into the feature and having to race for your life. Indeed, but the drivers are all set to go for qualifying for the opening round of the CSI Shocks Fall Series. With that, let's get to tonight's qualifying details presented by Pit Logic. Pit Logic is the most comprehensive chassis and shock setup application on the market. Available on Google Play or the Apple App Store. You can also check it out at competitionsuspension.com forward slash CSI Logic app. Drivers getting their final instructions as you look at the qualifying details. They will have three laps in five minutes to set their fastest times. The top 12 drivers immediately lock themselves into the feature. However, they will have an invert for those qualifiers, meaning if you're 13th on down, you'll have to go through the heat system. And Justin, you can see on the camera view there that rubbered in groove. We're starting at about 45% track usage right now. And you can see they're working in a groove pretty good there. Yeah, a little bit more worked in compared to what we see in or will see for some of the heats. Some of the first times coming in 14717 from Brendan Rogers. Harry Stort of 14754. And you're falling along with one of the other still falling along with Rogers. He tries to pick up speed. His third lap of 14724 couple 1000s off his first time his second best overall here comes chalk someone that is seen basically everywhere tower talk chalk seen a lot of the pavement side just finished up his last times he is second on the provisional board emerson ekstrom in third at the moment stuart and randall let's take a look though at bergeron as he tries to finish his last attempt second lap did not commute potentially scraped the wall one of the top dirt racers in all of my racing. Can he move up the qualifying board? No. A 14-9-3-3. Taking a look. And a new pole sitter. It is Austin Irvine. The top driver in practice. He's getting ready for his second lap using the bottom. Yeah, already seen a lot of great variety in which line these drivers are trying to use to find the quickest way around the track. A lot of them trying to stay above that rubbered in section on the track where uh, maybe there's not as much adhesion. That time of 14.895 finishes off Irvine's times. As we take a look at the next machine up on your screen, that is Stidham. That is currently having a bit of technical issues, but is currently in the sixth position. Last lap was a 14.772. This lap, a 7.55. Does move him up a little bit, but not in terms of positioning up on the racetrack. Already, just about every single driver has put in qualifying times at least one attempt up on the board. And it's even tighter than in practice here, Chris. The separation just three tenths of a second from the first spots to the bottom of the pole. Not only that, only one one hundredth of a second separates in from out right now, Justin. Again, remember, it's the top 12. Some drivers are practicing and trying to turn laps. But here is your current top 12. It is Austin Irvine first by one one thousandth of a second of Brendan Rogers. Tower Chuck is in third. Emerson Ekstrom in third, fourth position. Harry Stewart, Kobe Stenham, along with Chase Randall. Hunter Brady, Brady along with Alex Bergeron. Rounding out some of the positions is Jeffrey Stewart, Kelly Miller, and Jake Erickson amongst the rest of the drivers. As you see up on the pole on the side of your screen, a very competitive qualifying session to lock a lot of competitors into the show this evening. Yeah, we're closing and in on, uh, looks like one minute left to run and uh, looks like the track may be getting a little bare. Remember the track state will go down to 30% for these drivers, for the heat races, we'll look at the details in just a moment. But a couple drivers of note that will have to go to the bottom and through the heats. Out of the 26 center drivers, 
14 total look to go through the heat system. Amongst them, Cole Newhoffen, Justin Thomas, as well as drivers like Seth Bergman and Zachary DeLonge, some of the drivers to keep an eye on throughout this evening's events. Last, drivers getting the last of their instructions here, Chris, here. What you're expecting once we get back to green flag racing for the first heat? We got a lot of big names that have to race their way into this one, Justin. And I think with that, we're going to see some very exciting heat race action here to start things off. Drivers just about set to go to take the track as we get ready to start things off. Here is how they will line up for heat race number one here on the Global Sim Racing Channel for the opening round of the 15 and over CSI Shocks Fall Series class. It is Bryson Smith starting on the pole alongside Cole Newhoffen. In row number two, it is Billy Rowley, a podcast host setting to start against Roman Gephardt in row number two. Sean Maffrey starts in fifth with Will Sylvester in sixth. But Justin Thomas all the way back in seven. Payton Grease is in eighth with Zachary DeLonge in ninth. Rounding up the top ten starting positions tonight here, Chris, is Seth Bergman. Yep, then closing out the field is going to be Bo Stanzel in the 09 car, followed by Colton Hardy. We'll be starting up. Pete 12, lucky number 13 is Justin Brester. And then Sam Johnson completes our 14 car grid for this first of two heat race events. Johnson family helping organize things with CSI Shocks for this evening's action as that's a look at your starting grid for tonight's races for the first heat race. Rather, let's take a look at those details once again brought to you by Pit Logic as the drivers wait to get going behind the iRacing official pace truck. The details up on your screen, 15 laps distance with there being 26 entries, just the one heat race this evening. However, it's going to be important that you finish well and be up at the front. Just three drivers advance into the feature. And you're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of strategy there too. If you or if you're running in that third spot and you have a pretty good margin, but you're closing in on second place, do you go for that spot or do you hang on to the transfer spot and let it run? Once again, it is the top three from this heat race. Then the drivers will have five minutes to work themselves around the racetrack. 15 laps to do things here once again at this 3 8 mile oval racetrack. Let's talk a little bit about Lanier as well in terms of this. There is a little bit of banking in the corners, both in real life with the pavement as well as in turn with this dirt track. So the banking, the cushion was used by a lot of drivers just below that outside wall much of the practice however in the later portion of the run drivers trying to test themselves around the berm in that inside pit wall It'll be interesting to see how they battle and how they try and fight their way up to the front here chris yeah there's going to be a lot of different interpretations on how to handle this track My racing official pace truck moving its way through turns one and two as we get all set to go to start the CSI Shocks Fall Series. Again, Bryson Smith in control of the field in the Sparco number 33 machine. Pace truck working its way towards turns three and four to the pin entry. It goes to the left pedal. The drivers go. Green flag is out. The first heat race of the CSI Shocks Fall Series is underway. As expected, Justin, these guys going about five wide into the first corner, it seems like. Slipping and sliding all around. A lot of great racing already. Under Cole Newhoffen sliding his way up to the lead at the end of lap number one. That's not a surprise. Newhoffen, one of the better drivers in all by racing. He's in a slide chop battle with Robin Gephardt, though. Gephardt tries to slide up high. Going for the crossover is Newhoffen as he takes the lap lead. And there's still side by side as they come off the corner now the crossover Cole Newhoffen to the inside tries to slide up above it and that now opens the door and Gephardt right back by to reclaim the lead remember top three move on to the show Maffrey tried to send it behind them loses some ground in the slide job Newhoffen tries to slide it up the racetrack in turn four Gephardt once again retakes the lead Bryson Smith once again is on the bubble spot as cars collide for fourth position 
Mobley and Maffrey nearly turn it around as Hayden Breeze moves on by to fourth position, trying to give chase to Smith. Up in front, still a tremendous battle for the lead going on. Cole Newhoffen still trying to find the quick way around Roman Gebhardt, but Gebhardt sliding around the track just the right way. Now Newhoffen looks to the outside as they head to the turn of Two drivers already done, DeLonge and Hardy done for the night. They have pulled off the racetrack and into the garage area. You keep an eye on that top three. It's slowly closing to the third position though. Bryson Smith losing ground to the top two, while Grease nearly gets hit from behind as Maffrey again sent a massive slide job and lost two positions of progress. Lane is still up for grabs though as Newhoffen tries to work the cushion. Get part, watches as Newhoffen gives the slide job. Up the track, down the banking though goes Get part for the race lead again. Get part has just been masterful with those crossbacks. He gets uh, he gets passed by Newhoffen and immediately is able to duck right back underneath him and retake the lead. Oh, and they oh, hit. They make Get part gets hit on the front. He still keeps going as he tries to go back for the slide job. Newhoffen back inside as they fight down the front straight away. Five laps to go in the first heat race of the season. Down to the inside goes Gephardt, side by side, down the back stretch. Looks like things might be beginning to heat up for that final transfer spot as uh, Peyton Grease now closing in on the 33 of Bryson Smith for the final transfer position. Gephardt, meanwhile, up in front with a massive slide job, Grease. He's going to need to gain some ground and quick. Last time by was a tenth slower than Bryson Smith. Up at the front, just a couple laps to go for Gephardt. Three to go as he goes back for the slight jump. Over rotates as he loses momentum. Newhoffen pulls away, opens up the door for the battle for second. Smith gives himself a cushion. Can't get the slight jump though, it's Gephardt. Beat second and Grease moves up top with two to go. Yeah, Smith did not calculate that move correctly, lost a lot of ground. He's now given up the final chance to fight. Oh, he goes around. He spun, spins at a 360. We stay green. White flag is up on the stand. Peyton Grease controls the bubble spot. Gephardt in second. Cole Newhoffen up at the front, though. Comes through turns three and four. We'll take the first heat race victory of the CSI Shocks Fall Series season. Second spot, Gephardt, Grease moves on in the final transfer spot. Those three drivers move on to the show here, Chris. Yeah, what Let's a take great a look race. at. Yes, indeed. Let's take a look at the quick results, though. Sean Maffrey, Camboy in fourth, Bill Rowley in fifth, Sylvester in sixth, Brester in seventh, Smith in eighth, Bergman in ninth, and a rough race for Justin Thomas, finishing in 10th position. Rest of the cars under a not on the lead lap, Chris. Yeah, Bo Stenzel, Colton Hardy, Zachary DeLonge, and Sam Johnson unable to complete the... That's a look at your heat race results for this evening. The drivers, though, will have five minutes of repair. 18 drivers once again in the show for the A main for tonight's racing action. Chris, what did you pick up on as we've seen those battles intensify up the front? Well, it's definitely going to be a premium on being precise with your movements. Just a couple over calculate or under calculations by these drivers, and they lost some, some heavy spots. Uh, we saw the 33 not even make the show because he overestimated what kind of grip he was going to have. And now it's going to be interesting to see how the drivers react to the inversion as well because. Some of the fastest drivers going to be towards the heart of the field. Instead of being up at the front, it's going to put themselves into a bit of traffic for tonight's action. Yeah, if these guys want to run up front, they are going to have to work for it. Some of the quicker guys are going to be deep in the heart of the field, and it's going to be a march to get to the front as quick as they can. About three and a half minutes until we get underway for the first feature race of the fall season. And from what you picked up on, who are you keeping an eye on based on what we've seen in the practices, the qualifying, and for some of the drivers, the ones that'll start the back and have to compete against successful drivers in the Pro Series, as well as in the Series of Spring, such as Bergeron and others such as this man. Well, I think we got a lot of names in this series that are, that these 
people watching at home are probably very familiar with. You have uh, the drivers of some of the heat races that put on a great show. Uh, Roman Gephardt put on a passing clinic there for a while and, uh, you know, faded towards the end. But if he's if he's able to keep up that type of momentum through the future event, we could see him march into one of the power positions. Have to keep an eye on Austin Irvine as well. Again, runs in the sprint cars and real life on the West Coast. Actually, just a few days ago, finished in the top eight in his feature event at Kern County Raceway. Amongst to one of his last races of the entire 2019 season. Now he's into the virtual world and he's been consistently up to the top of the board. Yeah, definitely a lot of names, a lot of names you're familiar with from the motorsports world. And great to see these drivers here putting in some time in this warm up. It goes to show that uh, none of these guys are resting on their laurels here. Everybody wants to get some laps in and get this track dialed in. Right now in this warm-up, he is in the third position. But remember, the track state does carry over from the heat races, so the laps they're putting on right now are going to affect the lines. There is less slick stuff through turns three and four, for example. Or, pardon me, I should flip that in one in two compared to what we see in three and four, for example. Yeah, that's one of the really cool features that have been programmed into these dirt tracks is that dynamic surface, and we've hit on it a couple times, Justin. But you'll be able to see, as you can see on your screen right now, the track's starting to get rubbered in, and you can really see that line on the track, and these drivers will have to negotiate around that and really do some searching on the banks here to try and find what the quick way will be. Yeah, you're looking at some of the cars, uh, such as XM, XM trying to get by guys like Bergeron up on the top side and Grease and others who are trying to work themselves along the cushion to make sure they have about 50 seconds before we get underway here. Your final thoughts before we start tonight's aiming. Well, for those of you watching at home, this is gonna be a great race. Make sure to strap in and uh, if, you're, if your chairs came equipped with a seatbelt, it might be time to use it. We'll see. How many elect to use the seatbelts or how many are standing up from those seats and cheering in front of the home monitors. Again, these drivers finishing up the last of the warm-up time. Warm-up times for tonight's racing action. A lot of these cars going to have to start through the thick of things in terms of the field. The times shuffled a bit compared to practice earlier tonight where they're in the 14 twos to sevens. Drivers in qualifying in the 14.7s. Right now in the warm-ups, they're down to the 14.9s on average. But we're just about all set to go for tonight's A-Main. For the first race of the CSI Sharks Fall Series, 15 and over class season. Let's take a look at your details first. These are presented by Competition Suspension Incorporated. CSI has become the shock of choice for many of tonight, today's top professionals. They have won over 5,000 races and many track, regional, and national championships around the world. To learn more, visit competitionsuspension.com. These drivers will be racing 40 laps tonight. Again, as mentioned, an inversion in the field. Track state does carry over from the warm-up. These drivers just finished on the circuit. Again, a fixed setup race as they get ready to go for the starting grid. Let's take a look at those starters out of the 18 drivers in tonight's A main. The driver who got the top of the board after the draw was Kobe Stidham. He'll start alongside Harry Stort. Emerson XM starts in third position alongside Tower Chalk and row two. Brendan Rogers starts fifth. Austin Irvine all the way back in the sixth position. He was the fastest driver in practice and qualifying. Before tonight's events got underway, Chase Randall in seventh, Hunter Brady in eighth, with Alex Bergeron in the thick of things in ninth. And Jeffrey Stewart rounds out the top ten here, Chris. Going through the rest of your field, 11th is going to be Kenny Miller, followed by Jake Erickson, then Cole Newhalfen from the heat race, as well as Roman Gebhardt, Peyton Grease, and we have Sean Mahaffey, Billy Rowley, Will Sylvester. And that's going to complete your field here for a 40-lap event coming up for the Dirt Midgets. Who's going to come away with the first victory of this five-week season? We're about to find out. Stidham in control of the field. iRacing official pace truck is off. 
to the low pedal they go. Green flag is up for racing at the race flex. Already a strong one on the inside line. Stewart slide chomps his way up to the point. The crossover back, not a momentum for Stidham. First light lap goes to Stewart. These guys are multiple moves wide already here, racing for position. Oh, contact. Still... Contact in the pack, a couple cars spinning, Sylvester and Gephardt. We still stay green as we can. Austin Orvine also losing some spots with some contact. He's now outside the top 10, back in 11th. However, a majority of the top six all the way up of the cushion while other drivers try and search for grip and slide through the slick stuff. Yeah, a lot of these guys thinking they're going to have to try something different if they want to get their way marked up to the front. We have a caution, caution on the track. Caution is out. Jeffrey Seward is upside down to bring out the first yellow of tonight's race. Let's take a look at this. He was in the 10th position at the flag stand and then... Got into some contact after some car spun in front of him and then got flipped upside down. Yeah, it looks like it wasn't even really the meat of the incident that that uh, ended him up on his lid. It looks like afterwards he's still tangled with other cars. Everyone was sort of driving away from the incident. That is Kenny Miller that got spun around there as there was a bit of over rotation from Chase Randall and turned the stack up. Eventually sees him get on two wheels and eventually flip down the banking on top of somebody to bring out the first caution. And that was the hornet's nest, as some call it. At that time, it stunned a couple drivers. Yeah, of all the places you want to be at the racetrack, on, on your lid is definitely not one of them. Lights are out on top of the iRacing racing official as we're about to get back underway for racing here at the Lear Raceplex. 33 laps to go up on the board. Harry Stort this time in control of the field. He's off and away, we're back to racing. Well, Stidham not hesitating to try to make a move, but now he's under threat from that 25 with Brennan Rogers, who had a great restart. A bunch of cars already playing bumper tag. Irvine getting hit from behind by a couple drivers. One hits the wall, it's Exum. Able to keep it back on four wheels, he loses a couple positions. As Irvine tries to go three wide through the middle to the slick stop. Exum checks up as, he, as Irvine completes the slide job. Yeah, that wasn't just losing a couple spots there, Justin. He ended up completely tipping the car over, bouncing back onto four wheels and keeping it rolling. That was amazing. He didn't lucky, he's lucky he didn't severely damage the car. However, we have seen cars flip and then eventually come towards the front in real life. But Irvine, he wants to get up to the front. He's battling hard for fourth position, trying to go for the slide job on the inside of that purple on black and yellow machine. Yeah, Irvine, giving it all he has is we have a switch up at the front of the field. Stidham wanting the slide job for the race lead. Crossover back by Harry Stort. Stewart tries to slide back up to the cushion, holds up the momentum of Kobe. Kobe tries to go hard to the inside towards the pit wall. A massive dive. Loses momentum though. Stewart carries his momentum back up to the point once more. Yeah, these two are just dancing around the track like they've planned this. It is absolutely insane. Let's take a look at this on board from Bergeron. He's lost the spot to Irvine who hits the outside wall. Bergeron gets the spot back as he rides through the slick stuff once again, this time to the middle groove. And Bergeron not using the all the way up to the cushion line quite yet, as he passes by Irvin, Irvine once more. Yeah, Irvine pretty much the top drive. Oh, caution on the track. Caution flag is out. And drivers being told to hold up. It's for Hunter Brady. The orange number 10 machine. You'll see this on the GSRC replay. He got some contact from behind just after a technical issue. And that's unfortunate there for him. Yeah, sometimes when you uh, blink out like that, where you end up back on the track isn't always known to the drivers behind you. And sometimes you'd actually appear in the same piece of real estate and does not always end well. 
Again, we're back under the old flag. One driver has elected to come down the pit lane. It is Tyler Chalk. There is a faster pair available to these drivers. He is the first to elect to come down the lane and do so here, it appears, in the 07. He tries to go in the middle of the infield now all of a sudden. Okay, with that, drivers are still lined up behind the iRacing official pace truck, but the light's off here. So, Chuck to the back of the field as a result. However, Harry Stewart in control of the field. Stidham in control of the outside line. Third position, Rogers. Bergeron in the fourth position. Pace truck is off. To the gas pedals again they go. Green flag as they go near three wide at a turn one. And once again, the field spreads out right as they cross the line. We have cars literally all over the track here trying to find the quick way to... Rogers finding some speed and momentum on the bottom of three and four that time by. They're three wide for the race lead. He tries to slide down near the berm. Well, Stewart still carries the momentum up on the top side. He rides towards the cushion with the slide as Bergeron and Irvine collide for four. Yeah, Irvine getting a heck of a run there. Looks like it might have caught out the 20 of Rogers as he slowed up a little bit. But Rogers is right there digging on that very bottom of the track. Taking a look from the back end of Harry Stewart as he sees Stidham. Still continue to fight up the front. Rogers is to third for the time being. But Bergeron, he is hungry. So is Irvine. He tries to slide jump two drivers. Can't get either spot, however. But here comes Axum. He nearly flipped his axles upside down. He's trying to catch up to the battle as well. Yeah, these cars are surprisingly resilient, Justin. Some of these guys have literally been on two wheels at one point, and they're still able to continue on. Heck of a slide job battle still between Irvine and Bergeron. Bergeron still continues to ride the cushion. While Irvine nearly gets hit behind by Axum as he tries to go for the slide job. Top five make it top six or still up towards the outside wall. Trying to find any sort of mistakes to try and capitalize on. As we're about 15 laps to go in this A main. Ooh, Irvine makes contact with the back of Bergeron. Ends up jumping the front wheels. He still keeps it going, but he's lost a lot of ground. Bergeron, though, able to hold on to the fourth position. He rides again, still in the cushion. That third position driver in the blue car is Brendan Rogers, who still looks to try and hold on. Bergeron, though, we've seen him come from the back of the field to the front of the field in league races before. It's going to be tough, as everyone, though, is underneath the blanket. Top five separated by just six tenths of a second. Justin. I don't even know where to begin with this race. This has been insane. Apparently, I've been missing something, not watching very much of this dirt action. I'll buy you some tickets to some more dirt action. You can see once the springtime comes. But Rogers still battling, though, with Irvine as well as Bergeron. Bergeron getting impatient. He rides the bottom side towards the flank stand. Irvine holds up Rogers. Bergeron tries to slide jump his way for a second, nearly gets contact. Upside down goes Rogers. Caution flag is out. Brennan Rogers flips on his lid. He's back and going as we're back in our yellow with 10 laps to go. Let's take a look at this on the GSRC replay. Man, Chris. The stuff these dirt cars go through, he rides the wall, flips right over, gets back on all four, and just drives it. That was Irvine he made contact with, and it looks like, remember that 10 incident limit? He may have just reached it. He is no longer on the track. He has done so while being in the top five, a majority of this race, he is done for the night. That means he'll be at the bottom of the standings. The lowest he can drop at the moment is about 15th position. Major implications for the standings already. Yeah, you got to be careful with when you have such a low incident cap as we have in this division. There's there's really no room to be overly aggressive. And unfortunately, stuff doesn't even have to completely be your fault. But tough break for Irvine as he uh, is going to drop out of this event. 
Harry Stewart though, in control of the field, seven laps to go. Stidham in second, green flag is back up. A great launch for Stidham on the top, but Stewart sends it hard on the bottom, up to the cushion with a slide jump. Three wide, Bergeron nearly hits Stidham in the battle for second. And how about Cole Newhoff and one of the drivers had to transfer in from the heat race. He's now up there battling for a top five position. As Sidham still trying to ride now the middle line. Bergeron trying to carry as much momentum as he can from the inside. Three others have joined him. That's where a majority of the drivers preferred at the end of the practice session prior to qualifying. Under five laps to go for this time by. Look at Alex Bergeron making or trying to make that inside line work, running where the other guys are not. He's going to come up, try to get in front of the 36. Not oh, going to happen. And Bergeron hit the wall. Bergeron's around in the 360, making a 720, making a thousand, and then some. Caution is out with under four laps to go. And Bergeron had been trying that line the past 15, 20 laps. This time, he got just a bit too close to the pit wall. Yeah, he definitely was digging on that inside groove more so than anybody else on the track. But unfortunately, when you're racing on the edge, eventually you're going to go over. And he got popped by somebody there as well. So a couple car incident. We are under caution here with two laps to go. And Harry Stewart is your leader at the head of the field. Harry Stewart, he has led a majority of the laps tonight. He'll get the white flag, it appears, this time by. Yeah, Harry Stewart has worked his tail off to be up front for the majority of this race, like you mentioned, Justin. Can't say he didn't work for that one. Yeah, he definitely worked so strong, so hard. Him and Stidham, you got to give credit to him as well. Both of them having a stellar battle for that front spot. They controlled the top two positions from green flag to checker flag. The iRacing official pace truck comes out of turn number four. And to end off round number one of the CSI Sharks Fall Series, Harry Stewart takes the checker flag. He wins it at Lanier. Congratulations once again to Harry Stewart on a stellar performance tonight, leading the majority of the laps on the way to the checker flag this evening, Chris. Yeah, like I mentioned, he definitely worked for it. These drivers put on a tremendous race, and if you were watching at home, you definitely got your money's worth on this one. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your post-race coverage. You're watching the Global Sim Racing Channel for the CSI Shocks Fall Series, live from Lanier, Lanier Raceplex. back everyone to the global sim racing channel for tonight's coverage of the csi sharks fall series and the 15 and over division presented by competition suspension incorporated and pit logic 
Let's take a look at your final A main results for tonight's action. Harry Storm comes away with the first victory of the season, leading the majority of the laps. Starting on the outside front row, Kobe Stidham came away second with Emerson Axum. Recovering from nearly flipping upside down to still come away in P number three. Cole Newhoffen finished in fourth with Hunter Brady rounding out the top five. Kenny Miller came away sixth. Alex Bergeron, after hitting the wall, went from top three all the way back to seventh. Grounding out the drivers on the lead lap and to the checker flag was Will Sylvester. The rest of the drivers finished off in the garage area here, Chris. Some of them included Brendan Rogers and Tyler Chark to round out your top ten. Austin Irvine, another non-finisher up there in 11th, followed by Sean Mahaffey, Jeffrey Stewart, Chase Randall, Peyton Grease, Roman Gebhardt, and Jake Erickson, and the non-starter Billy Rowley in the 79 will complete the field. That's a look at your unofficial race results for tonight's action for the opening round of the CSI Shocks Fall Series. Joining us in the broadcast booth is your winner tonight, Harry Stewart. Harry, how are you feeling after coming away with the first victory of this fall series season? Yeah, pretty stoked about that one. Got to, got the lead, I think, lap one and just, yeah. How tough was it to try and hang on because you and Stidham were constantly going back and forth with slide jobs, trying to go through the slick stuff on the bottom, all the way back up to the cushion, back and forth. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I never found a line I was like 100% happy with, so... It's always keeping me on my toes with the slide jobs as well. Of course, a fixed series set setups for these. How did the car feel as the night progressed? Uh, I didn't mind the setup, actually. It was it worked better for me. I like a loose car when I'm racing, so it all. I guess it sort of worked out for me. Overall, though, it was a strong start to your competitive season here tonight. Of course, the next race is coming up on the schedule. Include Lima Land. Your thoughts as we head towards the second round of the season after this W tonight. Yeah. yeah, yeah oh, yeah. Oh, something happened. What was that? Sorry. Uh, your thoughts about Lima Land, the next round of this calendar? Uh, yeah, I like pretty much all the tracks on the... Um the calendar this season so they're all short tracks and the one big track we go to is my favorite on the whole eye racing so yeah it's all pretty cool all pretty cool in harry's world but is there anyone <laughs> you want to thank before he lets you get back to celebration land uh yeah everyone at united esports we put a new team together the last couple of days it's all going pretty well and yeah, HRS, BRS, UDTV, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think Brett Wheeler is going to be very happy with you. He was watching on, I think, with this early action, but congratulations on the round one victory, Harry. Yep, yeah, cheers. Cheers to you too. That is Harry Stork coming away with the victory this evening. Chris, your quick final thoughts. Well, this was definitely an exciting race, and with uh, four more events left on the schedule, I think we're in for a good time, Just Absolutely. And we'd like to thank you as well for tuning in for tonight's exciting action here from the Lanier Raceplex. We'd also like to thank our sponsors tonight, including CSI Incorporated, as well as Pit Logic for what has been a very competitive season start. It was looking to be a competitive one all the way to the checker flag at the end of the five weeks. We also like to thank the companies that provide our hardware and software for a broadcast listed up on your screen now. With special thanks going to Judith Lawan, who provides her wonderful music. See the screen for how to get a more hold of her great work. Thanks to the team today once again of Chris, as well as Sean. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC and clean upcoming races, you can find it at GlobalSimRacingChannel.com like to help support the channel or you can you can check out our merchandise for sale at gsrc.storemby.com or you can check out our social media on twitter at gsr channel facebook at global sim racing channel and instagram at gsrc underscore gram don't forget to head over to our youtube page and hit that big red subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you don't miss a moment here on the global sim racing channel 
As mentioned with the race winning interview, the next race on the schedule is at Lima Land Motorsports Park, the Northwest Ohio's quarter mile of thunder. The operator and owned facility by the University of Northern Ohio will host the racing action on November the 26th for the 15 and over division. 14 and unders will be the following day. The upcoming races for other series are now listed up on your screen. That includes that 14 and under division, which starts their competition tomorrow night. You can catch that once again here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. But until then, and until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.